If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more money to fund your deals, regardless of your credit, your income or your experience, don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to plug you into the money in just a moment. Welcome to the Jay Connor Show, broadcasting to you from Moorhead City, North Carolina. I'm excited to have co-hosting the show with me for yet another episode, Chaffee Wynn from Chicago. Hey, Chaffee. Hey, Mr. Connor. How you doing? Fantastic. How you doing today, Chaffee? Awesome. Awesome. So for the benefit of those, Chaffee, let's tell them what we do here on the show in case this is their first show or podcast they've been tuning into on iTunes or YouTube. So Chaffee, it's your, it's your lucky day. You get, you get to introduce the show. Take it away. We, we just banter back and forth, Jay. That's all we do. Is that all we do? Is that all we do? <laughs> no, 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 no. We do much more than that. <laughs> well, obviously, as the private money authority that you are, we talk about how to raise private money, how to get private money, how to use it, how to talk to people about it, and all things private money. In addition to that, you obviously have an entire real estate business that runs and operates sometimes without you, a lot of times without you. <laughs> Most of the time without me. That's right. And so we talk about all things real estate from beginning to end on how to find deals, how to fix deals, how to find contractors, how to build your team, how to sell properties in 72 hours or less, and how to automate your business as well. And then obviously my favorite part is the whole mindset piece that we talk about. Um, which I think sets us, uh, uh, you know, out and above everyone else, right? Because we incorporate the mindset piece right into the real estate business, which really helps people implement what you teach them at your live events and on your coaching calls and everything else as well. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Chaffee, because it just came to mind that guess what? You get to pick what you want to talk about on today's podcast on personal <laughs> development. So we'll go over our, whatever our content is today, which, of course, we know is going to be talking today about uh, guerrilla marketing, how you or how people as a real estate investor, whether they are a newbie, never done a deal, or a seasoned real estate investor, how to find deals on a very, very small budget that bring in really, really high profits. So I tell you what, Chavi, before we jump in on today's show topic, let's go ahead and tell everybody how to get private money funding for their deals, regardless of credit experience or income. So here it is, folks. And we're going to put it right up here on the screen. And that is I've got an upcoming live event that you get to attend for a measly registration fee of 97 bucks. It's a $3,000 value, three-day live event where we talk about, as you said, Chavi, finding deals before other real estate investors know they exist, how to do that, how to get them funded. So at this live event, I actually have private lenders at the event that you get to network with. We go on the bus tour. We look at houses that are either under renovation or we haven't started the renovation or they're completely finished and now they're staged. And on that bus tour, Chaffee, tell everybody what happens on the bus tour that is really, really cool as far as who comes along on the bus tour. Well, obviously I'm there. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're at all my live events. Absolutely. <laughs> no, you know, what's really cool is that not only do you have your project manager and your contractor show up to your properties, you also have your designer show up to your properties as well. And so you get uh, the students get to ask all of them questions about, you know, what is being done on the property, how the property is being planned out, as well as the design choices, the paint colors, the floor choices, the countertops and, and all that and how that all fits together into a rehab project. Exactly. The third day of the live event is all about automation. How do we, you know, automate this business so we're just not replacing a day job with, you know, working for you. I mean, it's all about the wealth and the lifestyle. So we teach the what the wealth and lifestyle piece. Now, for in, in case folks are tuning in and this is the first show that they've heard, the reason I have Chaffee here uh, co-hosting a lot of my shows 
is because Chaffee is at the live event. He gets to hear a lot of the common questions from my students. And also Chaffee is in charge of, of the free one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions that we do at the live event. Chaffee, take a moment and tell folks what happens during those strategy sessions that are one-on-one -on -one with you and the other certified coaches. So, so what's really cool about the strategy sessions is that I get to sit down and the coaches, we get to sit down with the students, you and maybe your partner or your spouse or whoever you come with one-on-one -on -one, and it's just us talking about you and your business. So whatever challenges that you're facing, whatever difficulties you're having, or if you just want to see how you can move your business faster, it's all about you, your business, and also how we can help you advance that uh, to that next level. Obviously, we're going to discuss some things that Jay is going to bring up during the, the training itself and see how maybe some of that can help as well. And more importantly, again, it's really focused about what's going on in your life and in your business and how we can help you move and strategize, put together a strategy to implement for your business. Exactly. Getting rid of the fears, uh, taking care of the stumbling blocks and getting that plan of action to help, you know, take you to the next level. So Chaffee, let's go ahead and plug them in to how to get to this $3,000 event for a $97 registration fee. And here it is www.jayconnor. And if you're listening, that's all spelled out. J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. jayconnor.com forward slash money podcast. So Chaffee, today we are talking about another guerrilla marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call the ant farm. So my ant farm strategy consists of five steps. But before we start, Chappie, why don't you take a moment, tell our listeners and viewers what exactly is an ant farm, and then I'll get you to lead me through the rest of it. So an ant farm is you building your Basically, well, ants, when you think ants, you think worker ants, they go out there and they start doing all the work and they spread out and they find food, right? Your, your sustenance. And then they bring that food back to you, the, the queen, the queen ant, right? And uh, so I'm they're so, the I'm ones sorry, who, I would be the king ant. <laughs> the king I, ant, right. <laughs> just to get that, you know, really clear. All right. <laughs> So anyways, they go out and they do the work, they do the locating, the searching, and then they bring back the sustenance for you, which then you take a new process, right? And so in terms of real estate, we're going to build an army of ants for you to go out and search for properties for them to bring that back to you so that you can then work on closing those deals. Exactly. Exactly. So I started, you know... I've been in this business, as you know, Chappy, for 15 years, uh, focusing on single family houses, you know, doing two or three transactions a month in my small market of 40,000 people, but the average profits are over $60,000. I started utilizing the ant farm method, actually not until nine and a half years ago. You know, I just, I've been doing the business for six years, locating my properties in just very, very traditional ways. In fact, it was at the same conference and seminar that you and I met nine and a half years ago, and I'd never heard of an ant farm. So I immediately went back and started implementing the ant farm. Chaffee, let's start with the first step. And I know you've done the ant farm because you've been a real estate investor for years and years and years as well, because you started when back in, I think you started before I did. Back in 2002. 2002, yeah. Well, okay. I'm one year behind you. I started in 2003. Yeah. But, but anyway, so folks, if you're taking notes, of course, if you're driving, listen to the podcast, maybe go back and take notes <laughs> when you're back home and you can actually take notes. So five steps, five steps to having a successful ant farm strategy implemented. And, I, and I'll tell you folks, one cool thing about the ant farm strategy you will find very, very profitable deals 
engaging this strategy and you will not, in, in all likelihood, you will not find these deals. Well, there will be some overlap. You know, some of the strategies that we do through direct mail and Facebook advertising, and et cetera, there will be some of these people that were, that your aunts locate that are also on the internet or maybe searching on Facebook. But I would say, and tell me if you agree with me, Chappie, I would say most of these leads that we get by using the ant farm, we probably won't get these leads unless we initiate this strategy. Do you agree? Well, there's a, a yes and, and, and no, right? Like you said, there's overlap. And so the overlap obviously will be posted on different websites and people searching on Craigslist and everything like that. The things that aren't overlapped, I think, you know, the only way you find them is by implementing the strategy or, you know, hiring somebody to implementing a, a similar strategy. So and it also I would say it also really depends upon your first step that, um, that, that you're talking about. Well, that's true. And, I, and the other thought that comes along with that is that, you know, we, we utilize many strategies on, on locating profitable deals. And this strategy, we call it guerrilla marketing. This strategy is one of the most inexpensive, anybody practically can afford it to get it. So step one, folks, without further delay is, well, first of all, what are we looking for, Chaffee? What are we looking for? We're looking for for sale by owner signs and properties. That's that's what the ants, and you can be your own ant. You know, you you can be an ant in your own neighborhood. Why why hire another ant? Okay, the king ant can actually do some work. All right, so you can you can be you can be working your own neighborhood. So what we're looking for, as I said, are People that have their house for sale, but it's not in the multiple listing service. Okay. So what does the ant do? The ant drives around in their car, on their motorcycle, whatever their vehicle is. And where they and I, and we are looking for, for sale by owners. That's got a sign in their front yard. That's what we're looking for. So step one is choose the neighborhoods that you want to target. Now, let me go ahead and say this. And that is, you can't do the ant farm from your hip. You can't do the ant farm and be successful unless you've got a consistent schedule for yourself and for your ants. In other words, you just can't do this whenever you think about it. In other words, I learned the hard way. And Chaff, you've heard me say this. I've learned everything pretty much the hard way. I'm either going to pay for it at a seminar. Or I'm going to pay, pay for it through, you know, bad decisions, you know, in the business. But I, I learned the hard way that if I just rely on myself, you know, I'm not going to get that many leads. If I'm just going to rely on myself and my aunts, just, you know, when they see a FISBO sign as they're riding around, it's not going to happen because, you know, everybody's driving around on their cell phone unless you're in one of the states where that's, you know, illegal. And you say, oh, they don't even see that FISBO signs. They're not looking for it. So that's one of the steps. So, 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 Jay, you're kind of jumping ahead, only you're on a roll, so I let you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I get that way sometimes. So <laughs> choose your neighborhoods. All right. So obviously I'm going to be choosing like, okay, so for my, my business here my, in, in my area, I want to target, yeah, you got to decide what you want to target. I target bread and butter houses, so entry-level price points, okay? And I teach and recommend this to brand-new real estate investors and to seasoned real estate investors. And that is the reason we target, that doesn't mean I don't, I don't target other price points, but we consistently target entry level first time home buyer price points because that's the biggest pool of potential buyers to our houses, whether you're selling on rent to own or if you're just putting an MLS. So choose your neighborhoods. Number one, definitely 
first home home buy, first time home buyers. All right. So you need to know where those neighborhoods are. All right. So Chaffee, come in. You know, you you do ant farms, you've done ant farms. What other advice could you give about choosing your neighborhood? Well, so I, I agree with you is that this strategy works best with bread and butter properties, right? So I live in the Chicagoland area and we have, you know, half million, million dollar homes or neighborhoods where it's really fancy what to do and everything. And so this strategy is a little bit more difficult in those areas and you'll be driving around all day long and somebody that's got a $1.5 million home is not going to stick in a for sale by owner sign in their front yard, right? <laughs> so, uh, so like you said, choosing the right neighborhood, one that fits your criteria of bread and butter, first time home buyers is really what you want to focus on. Excellent. Step number two, Chaffee, is now you got your neighborhoods, you got your neighborhoods chosen. Step two is now we want to locate and find the ants that we want to help us do this. So, you know, when you and I have talked about this strategy before, I remember you uh, asking me, well, Jay, where do you find your ants? Mm -hmm. All right. So, Chaffee, there's a number of number of places to find ants. You have found them. I have found them. I tell you where I where I like to find them, but you can't rely just on this resource. So I like to find my ants in my warm market. I talk about the warm market in private yep. money. So people I know, people, you know, I know at church, it can be. Yeah, I mean, I normally teach don't do business with family and friends. But in this case, it's family and friends. And and look, here's what's neat about this strategy, Chaffee. I think you'll agree. And that is you don't have to fire anybody. I'm not paying anybody by the hour. I'm only paying people on production. And if they don't perform, that's their choice. You know, if they don't send the lead, if they don't send the leads in, then okay. I mean, you're it's, it's sort of like you're giving them the opportunity of a of a side self employment job kind of thing. So I like people out of my warm market. What kind of experience, Chavi, have you had in the ant farm on say finding people on Craigslist? You know, people that. You know, you're putting an ad out there. Or you put an ad on Facebook or whatever. Uh, what do you think about that? So you can definitely find people when you place ads out online. Obviously, it's extra income people are looking for. It's, you know, something that um, they can do on their own time. So it's interesting in that sense. The the only challenge is, is really our, our next step is, you know, finding the right people and really training them to do the business the right way or to find the right properties. Um, and, you know, moving, I'm just going to say the next step because <laughs> can't avoid, is that all right, Jay? <laughs> Go ahead. So the next step is really, you know, setting goals and expectations for them. And if you don't set the proper goals and expectations for the people that you find online or, as, or you know, by placing an ad, then they oftentimes tend to flake out and they do their own thing or they're sending you, you know, just anything anywhere or just doing their own, you know, whatever they want. So. So you can definitely find the right people. It's just you got to make sure that you're working with them and communicating with them to set the right expectations and set the, set the right goals. Right. But you want to go into that? What, what kind of goals and expectations uh, you want to set for these individuals that you find? Sure. So the first goal or expectation is don't ask them to do it or don't ask them just to whenever, I already mentioned this, whenever you see a FISBO sign, Take a picture of it, text it, or email it to me and my team. All right. So, first thing is in your conversation with the new ant is first of all have a discussion about when are they available consistently every week to do the ant thing, which is driving around. You know, you need to talk to them. Of course, what are what neighborhood are they best suited or area to drive consistently so it's been my experience Chavi, that an ant can cover their area really really well in two to three hours a week and i want them to go every week right. because i mean 
FISBO signs go up and FISBO signs come down. And so this is not a monthly thing. This is a weekly thing. And so I'm very happy. Now, look, and we got to be specific. I don't tell my, my new aunt, OK, I want you to do, you know, this. Well, let's let me give a specific example. So if I want them to do the Fox Lair neighborhood down Highway 24, well, that means I want them to go in the subdivision through, you know, the front entrance. And I want them to drive every street in that subdivision. OK, period. Once a week. And so, again, two hours, two hours, three hours a week, they're, they're going to be able to get you all the new FISBOs. So how often and when they go. Now, this is one of the cases, Chaffee, that I don't actually have to put a separate third party accountability piece in place to make sure somebody's doing their job. Right. For example, this past weekend, I did a bandit sign campaign. All right. And we talked about bandit signs on a very you know, recent show. And I actually had a third party drive the area to make sure the signs were put exactly where I want them put. Had to have an accountability piece put in on that. But this we don't need the accountability piece. So to find the areas consistently every week and and then and you got to tell them what to do. Right. So what I want them to do. I want them when they see a FISBO sign to take a picture with their smartphone and text it or email it to me as the owner of the company and also to my virtual assistant that is then going to be responsible for calling that property lead and get a property lead sheet filled out. So what are they taking a picture of, Jay? Just the sign or the sign on the house or the house or? I want the sign and the house. Now, if they can't get the sign and the house number, you know, on the on the uh, on the same picture, then they can take a picture of the sign and just the house, and in the text or in the email, give us the physical address. I gotta have the physical address. Well, I don't have to have the physical address, but jumping down the road, when our virtual assistant calls the FISBO lead, we just want to call up and say, "Hey, I saw your sign, or we saw your sign in your yard. Your house is for sale." We want to say, I saw, we saw your, your, your house is for sale at, you know, 327 Lockhart Drive, Newport, you know, and you know, and this is getting the cart before the horse, but you know, I'm going to want my virtual assistant to have the tax card in front. Not that you can use tax value, but the, the tax card can give you a pretty good idea on the square footage, the heated square feet of the property, so that when my virtual assistant is asking, and I know I'm getting the carpet for the horse, but when the virtual assistant is asking how many heated square feet and they're a thousand off, when my virtual assistant is looking at the tax card and say, well, I've pulled the tax card up. So anyway, that's why I want, I'm explaining why I want the physical address of, you know, of that property. What am I leaving out on step three? I think you, you got it, Jay, right? Yeah, you want them to uh, define the drive times. You want them to take a picture and, and text it to your team, right? Correct. Correct. So step four is I'm going to offer compensation. All right. How much I, do you pay them, Jay? Exactly. How much do I pay them? So I'm going to pay them $10 a lead. Simple. $10 a lead. So, or per text or per picture, you know, per property. And I know from experience that on average, it's going to take about 15 of those leads for me to buy a house. So let's run the math, Chavi. Let's run the math. On average, I'm paying 150 bucks to make five figures, which is, you know, in my case, 60 grand. So let me touch on that, Jay, which is, you know, even if it takes you 25 leads, you're still only paying 250 to make five figures, right? Or, or let's just say it takes you 50 leads because <laughs> you're in a different neighborhood. I mean, right? That's <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, if it takes you 50, then you're, you know, 500 bucks for five figures is, is what you're talking about. Exactly. 
And you know, in all states, if not almost in every state, we need to be careful about how you compensate your help. You and I have had conversation about this more than one time, particularly the live events. We go into this detail about, you know, what a real estate investor needs to be cautious of. And that is, Chavi, take a second and tell our viewers and listeners about when it comes to paying bonuses. Like, you know, so, you know, someone right now may be thinking, well, 10 bucks a lead. Is that like all you're going to pay? You know? So take a second, Chaffee, and, 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 and tell the viewers and listeners about what to be careful of on the bonuses and how we can do it and how we can't do it. Sure. So some people, uh, what they do is they pay an extra $500 or a thousand if they get a lead from one of your aunts that actually closes that you actually purchase. So if you purchase it, then I'm going to pay you a thousand dollars because it, it came to fruition and I'm buying a property. The only challenge with that is that some real estate agents in some areas will construe that as paying a commission and you're acting as a real estate agent or that, that aunt is acting like a real estate agent going out and finding properties for you and you're paying them a commission and they're not licensed to do that. And so they might get upset. They might uh, send you, you know, a cease and desist letter or report you to the National Association of Realtors for your area and, and just, you know, cause headaches for you. Yeah. So I don't recommend paying somebody a, a commission or a bonus or um, an amount if it's based upon a closing of a property. Right, right. So tell our viewers and listeners, why is it okay to pay whatever amount per lead? How's that different? Well, that now you're just, it's, it's not based upon a, it, whether the property closes or not, right? You're just paying for work. So they're doing a, a service and you're paying for that service. And it's not based upon any kind of closing or mission or anything like that. It's just, you know, pay per play, shall we call it? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I, I always like to give my team members bonuses. And, and some kind of, you know, legal, ethical, you know, right way. And so here's a way that here's a way that folks can, that real estate investors can pay bonuses to the ants. And that is once you have determined that you have an ant that's going to bring fruit back to <laughs> the king or queen ant, right? And they've proven themselves and they got consistency coming along and they're quality leads. You know, they're not junk leads. I mean, God forbid you hire an ant that writes out their own FISBO signs <laughs> right, right. and takes a picture of the FISBO sign and gives you a street address. And, you know, your VA is calling up people that say, no, I don't have my house for sale anyway. So they're giving you quality leads. Now you can back into it. So in my case, I know on average it's going to take me about 15 leads, property lead sheets, to buy a house, to do a deal. So once the, once the, once the ant has proven themselves, then, and those numbers are working, well, you can pay them an extra whatever, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks for every 15 leads they send in. Your thoughts, Chaffee, on that piece? No, I would agree with that. Uh, now, I would, if you know that your average is 15, sometimes it might take 10, sometimes it might take 20, right? So, you know, pick that number, whatever works for you and just say, you know, for every 20 leads, you get an extra 500 bucks. So if you're sending me quality leads, I know that on average, I, I'm at 15, only, you know, I want to put a little buffer in there for your business, obviously, right? Then, uh, you know, that incentivizes them to continue sending you leads, knowing that, hey, I got this many, uh, if I send in this many, I'm going to get, you know, an extra bonus. Again, exactly. it has nothing to do with you closing on a property, though, right? That is separate outside of uh, any kind of closing or strategy. It's all based upon you do this work, you get paid this amount, right? And you know what? I don't have a problem raising that per lead pay because run the figures. I right. mean, I mean, if, if you pay them $20 a lead, right, and $20 times 15 leads to get a house on average. What's that? 350 bucks. I do that math, right? I don't know what the math is. 
<laughs> hey, it's, hey it's, it's too late in the day. Hey, it's hey, the math works, right? Math That's works. right. It's 350. Yeah, I was right. This, I was right the first time. There you go. See, you're making me doubt myself. My I, was, I was just testing you, Jay. Well, <laughs> you know, you got me. Hey, let's wrap it up. Step number five. Step number five is you got to have team follow up. So here's the two main deals. You got the lead flow coming in. You got to have the, the team, the team doing the follow up right away. OK, so both parts are essential, but your aunt has done their job once they sent the lead in. Now you got to have either yourself, virtual assistant, whatever, making those calls, knowing how to make the property lead sheet calls. In fact, Chappie, we should do a show. We should do a show on how to effectively talk to a FISBO seller and get all the information that you need in Absolutely. order to negotiate a good deal. You, you well, agree? See, that's, that's important too, because you know that for every, uh, on average, 15 leads you get, you're going to get a deal. Whereas if you're not training the individual properly to talk to that FISBO lead, it might take 25 or 30 because they don't know what to say or what information to gather. Exactly. So that, that's very important that you uh, train your team properly. Absolutely. So Chaffee, those are the five steps. Choose your neighborhood, locate your ants, set goals and expectations, offer compensation and team follow up. So hey, I know we're going a little longer only. Is it okay if I throw in a little bonus for them? Absolutely. <laughs> um, there's two individual ants that I would recommend you look into hiring or two ants that I recommend you approaching that are consistent on when they go and search neighborhoods. And one of them is your mailman who goes on a regular route in the neighborhood all the time. And the second one is your garbage collector who, again, yes. on a weekly basis goes on throughout the neighborhood. And, you know, can snap, easily snap a picture and, and text it to you while they're on their route. So those are two really good ants to get to know and build a relationship with. And I think you've done that before, haven't you, Jay, with one of them? I, oh, I do the mailman, but I'm writing down the garbage collector. You know, <laughs> yep. I forgot that strategy. Yep. And so, yeah, I love the garbage collector. I, I'd heard it, you know, way in the past, never implemented it. But um Richard Sanitation is getting ready to get an offer from me today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. Who, who, who says the old seasoned geezer still can't get, you know, be reminded of nuggets? You know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> All right, Chavi, I told you at the beginning. And by the way, folks, don't go anywhere. We're getting ready to wrap up. Personal development mindset nugget. Boom. It's on Boom. <laughs> So, you know, one, one thing that I hear a lot from students uh, when I'm talking to them is that there's so much to this business. I don't know where to begin or, you know, I got to check out every single detail and I'm not uh, ready to make a decision yet. And we call that sometimes analysis paralysis. Um, some people just call it being overwhelmed with everything that has to do with, with this business. And really what I want to say is that this business, really, when you think about it, when it boiled, when you boil it down to its parts is find a property, fund it or fund, you know, find the funding, find the property, buy it, fix it and sell it. Those, that's it. Right. And, and so what happens, though, is that we get so caught up in all the little details of everything. You end up doing a little bit of everything and a lot of nothing. <laughs> and so, you know, the little mindset thing is that, you know. Focus on the bigger picture of funding, finding the money, right? Buying, finding the property, buying it, fixing it, and selling it. Those, those are the steps, right? Everything else is just details. And so when you work with the right mentor or the right coach, when you have a system that helps you do everything, follow the system and just do what the system tells you to do. Don't overthink it. Follow the formulas for calculating ARVs and properties and do what the system tells you to do and get that first deal done. And I can tell you, once you get that first deal done, then it's just a matter of repeat. You're going to learn as you move forward. So don't sit there and look at a property lead sheet for three weeks to 
to decide if this is a good deal or not because that property is probably already gone because some other investor jumped in and figured it out within three minutes or something. <laughs> so, so don't get overwhelmed with this business is, is really the key thing, right? It's, it's a very simple business that it has a lot of details, only you have the right team, you have the right coach, you have the right mentor, you have the right system, and you take it step by step. You chunk it down, take it step by step, and implement the system, and everything falls into place, and you'll learn as you go. Perfect, Chappie. Thank you so much for the reminder to everybody. Uh, what you just said, in a nutshell, reminds me of the of the KISS method, right? right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep it simple. I won't say the last word. So that's a wrap for the show, Chavi. Thank you so much for joining me on here. And before I give you parting comments, folks, if you are listening to us on iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review. Subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, like the video. And also uh, any questions you have, you can type in the comment section, comment bar on YouTube. And we'll get all of your questions answered as well. And remind them again, Jay, how to get registered for the uh, event, the live Absolutely. event. And by the way, folks, the event is like almost like now. So go check out this website I'm giving you, everybody. Tells you many, many more details about the upcoming live event. And so go to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast, all one word, lowercase. Chevy, final comments. Hey, take action. Start doing th things. Register for the live event and I'll see you there. <laughs> awesome. All right, Chevy, thank you again for joining me and to all of our viewers and listeners. Thank you for tuning into the show. Look forward to seeing you on the next Jay Connor show. And from now until then, here's to taking your business to the next level. Bye for now.